Manda. Viva ANC, viva. Viva. Viva Cosatu, viva. Viva. Viva SACP, viva. Viva. Viva Sanko, viva. Viva. Long live the spirit of Nelson Mandela, long live. Long live. Long live the spirit of Albertina Sisulu, long live. Long live. Amanda. Comrade, brand new chairperson of the ANC in KwaZulu Natal, Comrade Sitle Zigalala, Comrade, brand new deputy chairperson, Comrade Mike Mabuyakulu, the officials who have just been elected, the top five members of the National Executive Committee, representatives of the Alliance formations, traditional leaders amongst us, leaders of faith-based organizations, members and the leaders of the ANC Women's League, Malibongwe, and members and leaders of the ANC Youth League, Raw Young Lions Raw, delegates and comrades and friends, Comrades, Queen Jabulo Gakulu Gimi, Uguti Nibe Lapa, soon after the results of the top five have been announced. Wang Atamatros, Ame Hamba Namiga. And, comrades, it is really an honor to address you on the occasion of this provincial conference. And I'd like, comrades, to thank you all. Yesterday, I had the occasion of opening the conference of our movement in Gauteng. And I said to them, as I say to you now, that thank you for holding a very successful conference which is held in a peaceful manner in the style of the African National Congress. Thank you very much. <laughs> to all of you delegates, 1,770, I extend greetings from the National Executive Committee and thank you for representing your branches here. I'd also like to thank the 18 members of the National Executive Committee who have been executing their national responsibility at this conference. But especially single out our NEC convener or comrade Notawe Mafu, and thank her. As I embraced her, she said to me, Comrade President, Gwangati, I can just sleep here on your chest because I have not slept for a long time. Why couldn't we into Because she has not slept. And I also want to thank the task team that the NEC had put together, the PTT to run the affairs of our movement here. I now extend congratulations, comrades, to the leaders that you have elected. I want to thank the comrades also who did not succeed in getting elected for being magnanimous all of them came up here to the table and whispered to me and said, President, we accept the outcome of this election. 
Now that means Muti, no one should even be tempted to go against the will of this conference. Nobody should even be tempted to do so. This is a democratic process that has yielded this result. Let us accept it as the will of our people. In the end, comrades Nalabo, who did not succeed, in the end we say, you did not lose. And to those who succeeded, you did not win. The ANC is the only winner in this election. <laughs> Comrades, history will record that this is a pivotal moment for the ANC in this province. History will record that this is the start of a new era of unity and renewal in this province for the African National Congress. Where delegates, all of you who are gathered here, have had to confront the differences that have long divided our organization in this province. For a long time, too long a time, the ANC has been divided in this province. Today, we are united. Today, the ANC is united once again. And you have resolved on your own to build a strong and cohesive movement of our people. Comrades, this is now the time to renew and to rebuild the African National Congress and to return it to the strength levels that we are accustomed to. In the ANC of our people and has demonstrated the organization's ability to also confront its challenges and correct its mistakes. I applaud you for succeeding to hold this conference against difficult odds. Difficult odds that also included court challenges, difficult odds that also included long delays, but today, here you are. You have succeeded against all those difficult odds, and I applaud you and thank you for your resilience. It is now time, comrades, to put the resolutions of this conference into action. Delegates will need to return to their communities and put into effect what has been agreed here. Our 54th conference held in Gauteng in Nazareth resolved that we should renew and unite the organization I believe that we do not just need unity, but I think and believe that we need what I would call radical unity and radical renewal. We need radical political, organizational, as well as personal unity and renewal. Unity does not come from a conference declaration, but from tireless and continuous political, organizational, as well as personal commitment. Personal commitment that we have to put in, in our work in the branches, in the zones, in the regions, as well as in the province. We need to approach the question of unity amongst us comrades in a radical way and inject quite a lot of energy. And I say radical unity and renewal because we have always spoken about unity and renewal 
And it is clear to me that we now need to change gear and embark on a more radicalized form of unity and renewal. This needs to be demonstrated in the way that leaders conduct themselves, in the way that as leaders we work, and how all parts of the organization work together in pursuit of a common objective, and also work in a way where we are able to resolve differences amongst us and manage the debate that we should have amongst us. A radical unity and renewal, comrades, means that we should be able to have the courage to work with people that we never thought we would ever be able to work with. <laughs> radical unity and renewal means that we should be able to work with people that we differ with. Where you know that lo comrade nanae asizwani kwapela nje, but you must be able to work with that comrade. You must also be able to work with comrades where ordinarily you don't basically like each other and be able to sit down and work together. There is this new thing in our movement that comrades find it so difficult to work with each other because by a zondana, basically, to a point where now the ANC is going to force you that is what the ANC is going to do to you. I always tell comrades, and I've repeated it here in this conference, in this province. You know, comrades, the guidance that we got from the 54th conference was such that, and as I closed the conference, I did say, well, I figure I'm a comrades, a few comrades, but I figure the first stage after we were elected. And they said, President, your task is to make sure, Woody, you work together with the top six. And Omunye Wati, we want you to work together. No mani atanda, no anitandi. You must work together. That is what one of the delegates said. And I've often said to comrades, comrades, we did not choose to be put together like this. It was the ANC that chose to put us like this. And our task is to work together. See Bamba and be one thing because we've been given a mandate, and it is not a mandate of our choosing. It is a mandate of the African National Congress. And we must therefore be loyal to the African National Congress and be able to work with whoever we are given to work with. And in doing so, even develop a liking and a love for those that you work with. I always tell them, this is all I was telling the comrades about it. You know, Ukomre Dukosaza and Adamini Zuma and me, we contested the position of president. The conference decided to choose one of us. Ukomre Dukosaza was the first to come to me and said, Comrade President, you have been invested with the confidence of our people to lead our movement. I am going to submit myself to you. You are my leader now. And that is how Comrade Ngozazane is approaching. So I was telling them, Mugoti, go cabinet. Go cabinet, Comrade Ngozazane sits next to me. Right next to me. I was telling them, Mugoti, si bamba nangeza anda, ngimbamba nangeza anda, noma ngimbamba under the table, koto wa ngimbamba nangeza anda. 
Mengakabangogunye ni namaji ni angoro. Mengakabangogunye. We do that because we work together. And I can promise you our ability to work together holding hands on the table and under the table we are fun because we are demonstrating that we can work together. Oh, I'm going to pass with your food. Comrades, what I'm saying, Uguti, the African National Congress, has this great ability to make us to work together. And we have now, at the national level, found each other and we are working together. Even at Lutuli House, we continue to find ways of working together making sure what is the African National Congress is the one that succeeds because in the end what really matters is the African National Congress nothing else matters and therefore comrades even with this leadership that has been chosen here we want this leadership that has been chosen to demonstrate unity and it is when the leaders at the top demonstrate what they are united that the ANC in KZN will be united. It is when the leadership here underpin whatever they are doing with honesty, with integrity and unity that we will know what in Mbela, the African National Congress is united. Our commitment, comrades, to the radical renewal of our movement will be determined by our ability to end the manipulation of organizational processes to achieve certain electoral outcomes. The radical renewal that we seek will be determined by the energy as well as the resources we commit to raising the level of commitment to correct some of the problems we have faced in the past. For the renewal of our movement to succeed, our branches and our members must be active in our communities. They must be able to mobilize our people to address the challenges that confront them. It is for that reason that we launched the Tumamina campaign so that all of us as cadres of our movement must know what we are here as volunteers, as comrades who have been sent by the African National Congress to resolve the problems that our people confront. We need to be a campaigning organization and an organization that is also learning, but more importantly, learning from our people as we move on. And the people of our province, comrades, they also expect us to lead a clean and capable government. It is our responsibility to take the resolutions of this conference on governance into all the structures of the state where we are represented. We need comrades to act decisively and without fear or favor to end all forms of wrongdoing, corruption, patronage, and everything comrades that does not accord well with our people because our people are the barometer. Our people know intrinsically when something that is being done for them is done incorrectly. As a movement, we should act against anyone, even in our own ranks, who abuses their position for personal gain or who tries to enrich themselves with public resources. 
We need to demonstrate to our people that the ANC public representatives are hard-working people who are there to serve the people of our country selflessly. And it is this, comrades, that is going to endear us to our people. When our people see us serving them honestly and selflessly in whatever position that we've been put on, it is then that they become attracted to the African National Congress. It is then that they become more in love with the, our movement. Right now, comrades, those who conduct surveys are saying many of our people are warming up to the ANC throughout the country. And they are actually saying if we were to hold an election today, we would get well over 60%. And that is what our people are feeling right now. And comrades, we need to capitalize on that. They are having this renewed, renewed support to the African National Congress, which we must capitalize on. Because after all, comrades, we need to make sure that we hold on to state power to transform the lives of our people. The people of this, con of this province, comrades, expect us as the African National Congress to build social cohesion. They look to the ANC to respond to the apparent resurgence of racism, tribal and ethnic rhetoric. From its very formation, the ANC has fought for a non-racial society, for the unity of the oppressed, and for an end to all forms of discrimination and intolerance. We recall the words of Pixli Kaisa Kaseme in his Native Union statement, where he put the case for the formation of what became the African National Congress. And he said, the demon of racism, racialism, the aberrations of Corsa Fingo feud, the animosity that exists between the Zulus and the Tongas, between the Basotho and every other native must be buried and forgotten. It has shared amongst us sufficient blood we are one people. These divisions, these jealousies, are the cause of all our woes and all our backwardness and ignorance today. Close quote. As the African National Congress, we must consistently resist any attempt to drive a wedge between South Africans of different races, of different tribes and ethnic groups. We must condemn those, both within our ranks and outside, who seek to use race to advance their own narrow interests. We must do so because we know the devastation that racism and other forms of intolerance causes. We know it ourselves from centuries of colonialism and decades of apartheid. In other parts of our continent and in other parts of the world, we have seen how such attitudes can lead to conflict. They can even lead to genocide as well as slavery. We need comrades to grapple openly and honestly with simmering racial tension in our country today. In this province, we must also address the issue of relations between Africans and Indians in particular. This is an apartheid fault line that we have not yet fully succeeded in overcoming and we must 
as the African National Congress in this province demonstrate that we are determined to confront this issue and to address it and to resolve it. We should remind ourselves what the 1969 Morogoro Strategy and Tactics document said about our approach to non-racialism or to, to non-racial organization. It said, our open quotes, this approach is not a pandering chauvinism to racialism or any other backward attitude. We are revolutionaries and we are not narrow nationalists. Committed revolutionaries are our brothers and sisters to whatever group they belong. There can be no second class participant in our movement. It is for the enemy we reserve our assertiveness and our justified sense of grievance and anger. Close quotes. Let us therefore not waver in our commitment to build the South Africa envisaged in the Freedom Charter, a South Africa that belongs to all who live in it, black and white. The people of this province expect the ANC to also do another important task and execute it and that is to drive economic development and transformation. They expect the ANC, as well as this conference, to emerge with practical programs to attract investment into the province, to grow the economy of our province, and to create jobs. They have heard enough rhetoric and radical economic transformation talk, they now want us to walk the talk on radical economic transformation. Now they want to see radical economic transformation implemented and we must no longer just be talking about it as a slogan. It must now be implemented. And comrades, it must be implemented in a way that is going to improve the lives of our people as a whole and not the lives of just a chosen few. That is what our people expect. This means that we need to intensify our efforts to create work on a massive scale especially for young people. We cannot do this without much faster economic growth, which requires far greater levels of investment from both business and the public sector. It is for this reason, for the advancement of radical economic transformation, that we have embarked on an ambitious investment drive that aims to raise $100 billion over the next five years, and that is 1.3 trillion rand that we want to be raised for investment in our economy. And I keep saying, I would like that portion, a portion of that money to come here to KwaZulu-Natal to be invested to improve the economy of this province. And that is why, comrades, we are speaking to a number of investors across the world and here at home. And that is why we are doing everything we can to make South Africa an attractive investment destination as we were directed by our conference. Recently, last week, we went to Nigeria, we went to the UAE, and we went to Saudi Arabia. We met a number of investors in, in, in Nigeria, and we sought to encourage them to come and invest also in our country.
and a number of them are beginning to look at South Africa with great interest and soon we will be seeing a number of investors, banks, industrial uh, activity and all that coming from Nigeria to South Africa. We also were able to raise $20 billion from the UAE and Saudi Arabia to come here in productive investments. In fact, the Saudi Arabians say they want to come and build a refinery here and they want to get involved in uh, you know, products, petroleum products. And we said, as you come, as you bring your $10 billion, we want you to know that we are driving a program of radical economic transformation. We've got to be partnered with local people here as you invest your money. So comrades, we are on a drive, a huge drive to raise this money. This coming week, the BRICS summit is going to take place. We are going to have the four BRICS countries coming here and we're going to have also a number of other countries who will participate in the outreach as well as SADC countries. Our message is going to be very clear. We want the BRICS countries to also invest here in South Africa. And in fact, we want tens of billions of dollars to remain here in the country after that summit. So we're looking forward to the BRICS summit with great interest because it is going to benefit us. Now comrades, we are serious about driving radical economic transformation because as our conference resolved, we can no longer, 24 years after our democracy, continue to see the economy of our country being solely controlled by a minority. We now need to see many of our people participating meaningfully and actively in the economy of our country. And we are doing this, comrades, in a focused manner. One of the great things that we started doing, which also affects this province, is we set up the Pakisa program to look at the ocean's economy. And we said we want to focus on the ocean's economy to see what we can take out of the ocean to drive our economy. And as it is now, Comrade Ednamolewa here, who was leading that process, we now have firmed up a number of areas where investments can take place. Starting off by drilling for oil and gas here on the Indian Ocean, by getting into aquaculture, by building ships and boats and tugboats, by making sure that we get involved in ocean or sea transportation. And in doing all this, we've been focusing on making sure that our black people who were denied opportunities to participate in economic activity are the ones who are going to benefit mostly in all this. But we are also looking at the ocean's economy to create jobs. Comrade Edna here will be able to tell you that when the ocean's economy project that we are driving gets into full steam, we will be able to create up to a million jobs just in the ocean economy. Already, almost 70 billion rand is to be invested in the ocean's economy. Now, I say this because KZN is the one province that will benefit the most out of what we do with the ocean's economy. So, comrades, Siakuba, we are going to move ahead. And we are going to make sure, comrades, Ubuti radical economic transformation does not become a slogan. It becomes a reality. 
we are going to embark on a number of programs that are going to give meat and flesh to this issue of radical economic transformation. And we are going to hold a Lekhotla. At our Lekhotla, we are going to focus on what is going to drive the economy of our country forward. And we're going to want to emerge with real practical steps that are going to take our economy forward. So comrades, we want to change the patterns of ownership in reality. We want to change the patterns of control across the economy using policies such as the broad-based black economic empowerment, the employment equity, the preferential procurement in a more targeted manner. The preferential procurement process will be used to good effect because through prefer preferential procurement, the government buys a lot of goods and services. We are now going to drive the process so that black people are at the forefront of providing those products and services to the government as it procures. So we are going to drive this comrades. We are also going to look at the competition policy. We're going to look at it more effectively to create space for emerging black companies to expand our black industrialist program and provide new level of support to black entrepreneurs. We now, comrades, are going to get into a new, new era of making the entry of our people into the economy a reality. The people of KZN expect the ANC to also embark on another important program which the conference decided on. And that is the question of land. The return of the land from whom it was taken by colonialists and the apartheid misrulers of this country. The resolution that we took at our conference will be implemented without any fail. We will implement the return of the land to our people through the program of expropriation of land without compensation. That is going to happen. Land redistribution comrades and the agrarian revolution are critical to the achievement of national unity. They are also necessary to heal the divisions of the past and to unlock the social and economic potential of one of our country's greatest resources. We are working to accelerate land reform through various mechanisms, including through this process of expropriating land without compensation. We must commend the many thousands of South Africans who have participated in the public hearings, and some of them are still taking place here in KZN. This is a great example, comrades, of democracy in action in an engaged citizenry that is eager to find solutions to a problem that has had such a devastating impact on the people of our country. Our responsibility as the ANC is to give full effect to the demand of the Freedom Charter, that the land must be shared among those who work it, as well as among those who need it. It is our responsibility to engage with all constituencies and stakeholders to ensure that, comrades, there is broad support for the fundamental and far-reaching land reform in both rural and urban areas. We will continue to engage traditional leaders and communities to give effect to the constitutional requirement that all citizens should have equitable access to land. At a national government level, 
This will be led through an interministerial committee that I have set up on land reform, and this is going to be supported by a task team that we are going to be announcing, task team of experts. This committee is tasked with coordinating and implementing measures to accelerate the redistribution of land, the extension of security of tenure, the provision of agricultural support, as well as the redress of spatial inequality within a broad and comprehensive land redistribution program. We are, comrades, going to embark on a massive agricultural revolution in our country. We want to return as many people in our country as possible to the land as we push ahead with our land reform through expropriating land, we will make sure that there is an agricultural revolution that sets underway so that we are able to gain a lot of growth out of agriculture. Agriculture has already proven that it is one of the sectors that injects growth in our economy. So comrades, we now want to get down to real business and make sure that as the land is returned to our people, so our people must become successful farmers and be able to get a better life out of the land. And this, comrades, we are seeing as it is happening in a number of countries. President Punangagwa of Zimbabwe was telling me that much as their economy had been on its knees, they are beginning to see how agriculture plays a critical role in beginning to uplift their economy. And that is precisely what they are doing. In Ethiopia, they are doing precisely the same thing as well. A country that was ravaged, as we all know, by famine and hunger, they are now utilizing agriculture to inject a lot of growth in their economy. So comrades, we are driven, we are committed, and we are focused. We are going to make sure that the agriculture comes alive in our country as we redistribute land amongst our people. Comrades, in the week that South Africa and the world celebrated 100 the 100th anniversary of Madiba's life, the people of KZN expect the ANC to uphold its value, his values. They expect the leaders, public representatives, and members of the ANC to embody the qualities that have become associated with Madiba. Political tolerance, humility, selflessness, hard work, and dedication. Our responsibility as we leave this conference is to work together to build the African National Congress. But comrades, we will only be able to have a strong growing economy if the African National Congress is a strong movement. It is only when the ANC is strong that our entry in the economy and what we do in the economy will be more effective. It is therefore important that as we leave this conference, we should go and rebuild our branches, make our branches alive so that they can shoulder being young people, with many of the women of our country continuing to be oppressed and also not to be well treated in the workplace and also in society, there is a lot that rests on the shoulders of the African National Congress. 
And the ANC can only do all this if it is a strong organization through its various components, through the strength of the Women's League, the strength of the Youth League, and indeed the strength of our branches. The tasks that lie ahead are quite serious and enormous. It is where the unity of purpose amongst us as leaders, where we demonstrated in effect and showed that the leaders of the ANC are cohesive, they live the values of Madiba, they are out there to unite the nation that we will be able to succeed. So our task is to build a free and equal and democratic society that is envisaged in the Freedom Charter in which many of our people fought so hard and sacrificed so much for. It is this task that we now confront. But comrades, I come to my last, the last task that we now need to confront. Next year is our election. Next year, we go to the country as the African National Congress to go and get our people to support us once again. Remember that as the African National Congress, we are plus minus one million members. But we were supported in the last elections by up to one, 11 million people. Now we have a big responsibility on our shoulders to go out and go and get 15 million South Africans to support the African National Congress. Our task and our target, comrades, is to go and get 15 million South Africans to vote ANC. We therefore, all of us sitting here as leaders of the ANC, each one of us has a personal task. Each one of us has a personal duty. As president of the African National Congress, I know I have a personal task to make sure that in whatever I say, in whatever I do, in whatever I tend to be doing, whatever, wherever I am, I am representing the African National Congress and I want to attract as many people as possible to vote for the African National Congress. Now, I would like you to imagine yourself as the president of the ANC from now until we have elections. So now, again, as you sit here, you are the president of the ANC. Uzangmigi Stalosan back after our elections. But over Manji, you now are the president of the African National Congress. You have to speak like the president of the African National Congress. You have to walk like the president of the African National Congress. And now your task, your task is to win votes. Because we must appeal to the voters out there and get them to vote for the ANC. Even as you sleep, Ula Lejemo president were ANC. Mingangu is putting Lala Raja. But the important part, comrades, is that from now on, each one of us, each one of us, as all of us are leaders here, yes, from the president, the deputy president, the SG, deputy SG, national chair, treasurer general, and all the members of the national executive. And here, O comrade C. No comrade Mabuya Kuhl and other office bearers or officials who have been elected. We all are now must be focusing on the elections. That is what we must be focusing on. Without any fail, comrades. From now on, after holding this successful conference, a conference which is going to be looked upon by everyone 
as a successful conference that is going to unite the African National Congress. We now say, let us now capitalize on these surveys that have come out because our people in their thousands are becoming more positive towards the ANC. Let us go and win more of them. The other political parties, they want us to lose the elections. And we can tell them, Ogoti, losing does not exist in the ANC dictionary. As a yard they all. So we must go forward with determination to win the elections. Therefore, comrades, our election structures. You know, when there was a moment when in the movement there was a doubt whether we should go maybe come early for elections or not, we said no. We actually need to have this conference so that we have a leadership that is going to lead the election process. We said we must hold our conferences all around the country and have leaders who are going to direct the election process. Now from here, we must therefore go to our regions and re get our regional elections structure set up. We must go to our zones and get our zone structures for elections set up and our branches. And comrades, right now, the task must be we must do what we do best. Every home must be visited and every home must indicate that yes, they are going to be supporting the African National Congress and if they have problems, we must address those problems. That is why, comrades, the Tumamina campaign is an important one because your now which we are trying to use to galvanize our structures to get into election mode. So therefore, comrades, the main activity that we must now embark upon is to correct the things that our communities are complaining about. Let us make sure that we bring water. Where there is refuse, we must go and clean up and show our people that the African National Congress is with them. Comrades, where there is sewage leakage, sewage, we must get our municipalities to go and repair that because nobody will vote for us if there is sewage leakage. Nobody will vote for us if our people still do not have good service delivered. So this is the hour and the time when we must now go around to all the places where our people live and correct what is wrong as we build our structures and as we strengthen our organization. This is where we now must become focused and ensure what we win the support of our people. So comrades, if we can do that, if we can do that, we will then be able to get millions of South Africans voting once again for the African National Congress. We will then be able to show and demonstrate what our people accept the African National Congress as the leader of society because that is what our people have always known us to be that we are the leaders of society. So I conclude by saying, comrades, the elections and correcting the challenges our people are facing are the priority issues as we strengthen our branches. See Abasaba now. Forward, we win our elections. Forward. Forward, we win our Catholic Zion. Forward. Forward. Forward, with KZN. Forward. Forward. Forward, with KZN, as it shows leadership. Forward. Forward. 
forward with a successful conference. Forward. Amanda. Amanda. Forward with the PEC you are going to elect. Forward. Forward with a good PEC you are going to elect. Forward. Amanda. Yabo Akumris.